Actually, tocotrienol is actually a form of vitamin E. Uh, vitamin E consists of two different series or class, classes. One called tocopherols and the other one tocotrienols. Actually, they have very similar chemical structure of a head and a tail. So the difference between the two actually lies in the tail. For tocopherols, the tail is fully saturated. For tocotrienols, you have three double bonds at the three, seven, and eleven positions. So, all this while, if you were to buy a vitamin E product in the market, you only get tocopherols, and usually only one alpha tocopherol. Why you don't get tocotrienols is because in the past, tocotrienols are not available commercially. It's difficult to find in nature until we found plenty of palm oil and therefore Malaysian companies became the first to extract and commercialize it. And because of this now, their availability, there are more products in the market now having tocotrienols. Also research, because in the past also it's difficult to find tocotrienols for research. And if you find that in recent years, there's a lot of research done on tocotrienols. And what they found, very interestingly, tocotrienols have some unique activities not found with the tocopherols. And one of those that has actually uh, caused a lot of excitation to the scientific community is actually on the neuroprotective activity. It all started in Ohio State University where they found that it can prevent nerve cells under culture from dying when challenged with glutamate. And glutamate is the toxic chemical signal released during a stroke. Then they went on to do on rats, induced stroke in rats. So with and without tocotrienol, they found that those given tocotrienol, when they induce a stroke, the damage is smaller than those without tocotrienols. Then they went further to do on dogs again. <coughs> Similarly, they found that those given tocotrienols, if you induce stroke in them, the damage is much smaller, significantly smaller than those on toco, uh, not given tocotrienols. Here we have done a study in the humans itself, people with what we call white metal lesions. Now, what, what are white metal lesions? You see, our brain, eh, you need a lot of energy and therefore the brain is supplied by a massive network of blood vessels. But unfortunately, these blood vessels can get damaged. For example, aging itself and small blood vessel disease, they call it, cause damage to the small blood vessels. So when these blood vessels are damaged, the blood supply is disrupted. So when the blood supply is disrupted, it's just like in a stroke situation, you don't get blood flowing to the brain and they're starved. And this, then this nerve fibers in the brain will die off. And from an MRI, you see the white matter, they call it white matter lesions. These are lesions in the brain. Basically, these are nerve fibers degenerating and dying off. So once people have white matter lesion, then they will start to progress. And they get more and more and more. So what we did is, we have two groups, one given to cotrinos, one placebo. Study was double blind, we don't know who is given what. Even the volunteers, they won't know what they have been given. So we MRN at, one, at baseline, one year and two years. And then we see how the lesions grow. And very interestingly, those on tocotrienols, on average, we find that the lesions are stabilized. Those on placebo, they start to grow bigger and bigger, like what has been reported by other researchers. So based on that, it proves this is the first human study to show that the tocotrienols indeed can protect your brain cells. Now, white methylation, certainly the world scientific community, a lot of neurologists are so excited about white methylation because today they realize that white methylations are associated with many neuro degenerative disorders. For example, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, and a lot of other neurodegenerative diseases. So, based on what we have, 
um, obtained so far. Tocotranol has immense potential, for example, in preventing further degeneration of your nerve cells in the brain, and therefore has a potential of preventing or delaying development of cognitive impairment, dementia, and even Alzheimer's disease. Now in my lab, I have this little worm called C. elegans and I have a transgenic version of it where the human genes have been, or disease gene has been inserted into the worm. So what this worm will do is when we induce them, they will start to produce this bitter amyloid that is found in Alzheimer's disease. And once they have this bitter amyloid accumulated in the body, they go into paralysis. So what we did, we have a control and we have a group where we give them actually tocotrienols in the culture. Then we see the time they get into paralysis under the microscope. And we found that with the tocotrienols, the time they go into paralysis is much delayed. So there's a lot of potential there. Latest what we've done is that we look at the whole transcriptome. Basically, we look at the whole genome of the worm see how the different genes are activated, so-called up-regulated or down-regulated. We have to see what happens in the genome. Whether to call suppress the genes that produce the beta amyloid or other factors coming in and all that, you see. So we are waiting for the results. Hopefully, I get it in one to two months' time, that will be interesting.